Okay, so Junior Roberts here with real juniorroberts.com. We're on to question six of the January 2020 CSEC Physics past paper. I've done questions one through to five in earlier videos, so I'll place a link to that playlist in the description below so you can go ahead and check out those videos. So let's get right into this video. Okay, so the question here says three emissions alpha, beta, and gamma from a radioactive source are subjected to a uniform magnetic field perpendicular to their path as shown in figure 5. Draw the three rays to represent the path of each of the three emissions alpha, beta, and gamma on figure 5 as they pass through the magnetic field. Okay, so first thing we're going to consider is that we have our three uh, radioactive particles, right? Our, our three radioactive emissions. So we have alpha, right? We have beta, right? And we have gamma, right? Now, these three radiation, first of all, if we look at the alpha radiation or alpha emission, alpha emission results in the release of a helium nucleus, right? So write our helium atom, helium atom, for the release of a helium nucleus, right? Right? And a beta emission results in the emission of an high-speed electron, right? So we have our high-speed electron, right? And gamma radiation is essentially emission of a uh, I energy, all right? So I'm going to write it as this, all right? So those are our three radioactive emission. Now we're going to look at uh, how these three different radioactive emissions are affected by a magnetic field. Now, first of all, when you look at this illustration here, and we have a magnetic field, all right? This magnetic field is a uniform magnetic field that is going into the page. And the reason why we say that it is going into the page is if we, let us say we take an arrow, let us say this is an arrow, right? And we have the arrow tip, arrow tail like that, right? If this arrow was going into the page, what we would see is this portion, which is the tail of the arrow, right? And to look like an X. So represent the tail of the arrow as an X. So therefore, this magnetic field is going into, is going into the page, Right, or into the screen, right? So that's our magnetic field, right, right? Now, in order to represent the path that these three radioactive emissions will undergo, we will need to take into consideration Fleming's left-hand rule. So by considering Fleming's left-hand rule, right, the path in which the alpha particle will travel will resemble a path like this, right? Right? So what will happen is that the alpha particle will be deflected to the left like this. Right? Now when we take into consideration the beta particle now, right? applying Fleming's left hand rule again, the beta particle will be deflected to the right like this. Right? And it's going to be significantly deflected more than the alpha particle. So let us write, this is our beta particle and this is our alpha particle, right? Now, in the case of the gamma particle, right, since the gamma particle is just uh, energy, right, it's going to pass straight through like this, right? So it's going to pass straight through, and that's our gamma, and that's our gamma particle, right? So that would be the path taken by these three radioactive particles as they pass through this uniform magnetic field that is going into the page. All right, so we're going to move on. So this question here says, the magnetic field is replaced by an electric field as shown in figure six. Draw the three rays to represent the path of each of the three emissions, alpha, beta, and gamma, on figure six as they pass through the electric field. All right, now again, if we consider our three radioactive particles, we have our alpha, right? And that's the helium nucleus, right? And the charge on this particle is positive, 
right? So it's positive, right? And the beta particle now, right, which is an high speed electron, will have a charge of minus, of negative, right? So it will be negatively charged, and the gamma particle will have a charge of zero, right? So if we consider the charges on these particles, right, and we have a uniform electric field with a positive terminal and a negative terminal, if we first consider the alpha particle, the alpha particle will be deflected towards the negative uh, terminal. Since the alpha particle is positive, it will be deflected towards the negative terminal. So it will go like this, right? And for the beta particle, right, since the beta particle is negative, it will be deflected towards the positive, like this. Right? And again, it will, be, it will be significantly deflected more when compared to the alpha particle. Now, the beta particle is, a, um, is just energy, and it has a charge of zero, so therefore it will pass straight through like this. Right? So this is our gamma, right? this is our alpha, and this is our beta particle. All right? So let's move on. So this question here says, an unstable isotope of lead 210 undergoes exactly two sequential beta particle decays followed by an alpha particle decay to become stable lead 206. Now with reference to the information in table 3, write the nuclear equations that will result in the formation of stable lead 206 from lead 210. Alright, so we're going to first look at uh, the first beta decay equation. Now, again, we can recall that during a beta decay, right, during a beta decay, a uh, high-speed electron is emitted from the nucleus of the atom. Because what happens is that a neutron inside the nucleus decays to form a positive proton and an high-speed electron. And that high-speed electron is ejected from the nucleus of the atom. So in a beta decay, we have an electron being given off. Right? So if we consider our first beta equation, right, uh, our reactant in this case would be lead 210. So we will have lead, right, Pb with a, an atomic number of 82, right, and a mass number of 210, right. And remember the atomic number, right, is merely the number of protons that is inside the nucleus of the atom, and the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus, right? So we have OLED reacting, right? And it undergoes a beta decay, right? And again, as we said before, in a beta decay, we get a high-speed electron being given off, right? So we'll have electron minus one with an atomic number of, the mass number of zero and an atomic number of minus one, right? So since we have since we need to ensure that uh, both atomic number and mass number is conserved, if we have an atomic number of minus 1 on this side, and we have a atomic number of 82 here, it therefore means that our unknown element that is formed will have an atomic number of 83. So we have 83, right? And since the mass number is 0 here, and our mass number here is 210, it therefore means that our mass number here will also be 210, right? Because the mass number will be unchanged. Now, if we look back at our table now, we see that when we have an atomic number of 83, our element is bismuth, right? So we write bismuth there, right? And then we'll move on to the second beta decay. And in this case, our reactant will be our bismuth. So we have bismuth, 83, and this is 210, right? It undergoes a beta decay. Right, and again, we'll get an electron being given off. Right, and then again, if we take a similar approach, we have minus one right here, and this is 83, so therefore, our unknown atomic number must be 84. Right, and the mass number will remain unchanged, so we'll have 210. And if we look back at our table, our element is polonium, right? So, polonium, then. This polonium now, which is our new reactant, polonium, will undergo a alpha decay, 
right? And doing an alpha decay, right, let me just write it here. Doing an alpha decay, right? We get an we get a helium nucleus being given off, right? We get a helium nucleus being given off. So therefore, what we'll have then now is we'll have some element here plus uh, a helium nucleus. So we'll have helium nucleus, right? Now, on this side, we have an atomic number of two here, and here our atomic number is 84. So therefore, in order to get uh, the atomic number being conserved, it, must, it means then that our unknown substance must have an atomic number of 82. Because if we're at 82 and, 80, 82 and 2 here, we'll get back 4 here. Now for the mass number, here we have 4, over here we have 210. So the mass number here must be 206. Right? And in this case, our element will be the lead. Right? Lead 2. 206 right so that is how we'll actually write our three expressions right or our, our, our three equations so let's move on so this question is says calculate the energy given off in a nuclear reaction if the change in mass is 0 0.3018 u and u is given as 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram and we're given that c is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second so to solve this question, we're going to use the equation E is equal to mc squared, where E is the energy given off, m is the mass defect, and c is the speed of light squared. Right? Now, in this case, we're given c as 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and we're given m, which is the mass defect, in astronomical units, right? 0 0.301 astronomical unit. Now, in order to use this equation, we will first need to convert this value from astronomical unit to units of mass, which is kilograms. So we know that one astronomical unit is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram. So therefore, to convert from astronomical unit to kilograms, we just simply multiply the value in astronomical unit by this constant here. So we're going to say that the mass in kilogram is equal to 0 0.3018 u multiplied by 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Right? Then if we take our calculator, right, and we say 0 0.3018 multiplied by 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27, we get an answer of 5.00988 kilograms, right? So that's our mass in kilogram. So now we can take this mass in kilogram and apply it in our formula here, right? So we will have E, again, is equal to mc squared, right? In this case, our mass is 5. 0 0.00988 this should be uh, an exponent times 10 to the minus 28 so times 10 to the minus 28 multiply by this is times 10 to the minus 28 multiply by the speed of light squared which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and this is squared, right? Now, taking out our calculator again, right? We have 5.0098 times 10 to the minus 28. That would be multiplied by the bracket of 3 times 10 to the 8, close bracket, squared, right? And that gives us an answer of 4. 0 0.508892 times 10 to the minus 11 joules, all right? Or we could say that it's approximately 4.5 times 10 to the minus 11 joules, all right? And that would be our answer. So again, this was Junior Roberts with realjuniorroberts.com.
If there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on, please post it below in comments and I'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you. Like this video if it was helpful and click subscribe and the bell notification so you'll be updated whenever I post new videos like this. Thank you for watching.